In this video, I'm gonna be showing you that it's possible to get your website running nice and fast and achieve some pretty impressive Google PageSpeed scores, even if you're on, let's say, below average hosting. In this video, I'm gonna be using our brand new theme, Popcorn. You'll find details about Popcorn at popcorntheme.com, link in the description. There's also links down there to everything that I talk about in this video, including the, uh, the demo sites that I set up. The first site that I created with Popcorn Theme, bestcornpopper.com, has been scoring 100 out of 100 on Google PageSpeed. And a lot of people have been saying, well, yeah, that's fine, Alex. You know, it's easy to score 100 out of 100 when you're running on super fast hosting, which, you know, that site is. It's on Spiderweb Hosting, which is available via myself. I'll put a link to that hosting down below. It's high-end stuff, and it costs quite a lot of money. So, you know, I thought it was time that we tested the theme out on some cheap hosting and some hosting that's not particularly good, just to see what would happen. Can we still score high, even if we're on some pretty rubbish slash garbage hosting? So I signed up with two of my favorite bad hosting companies, HostGator and GoDaddy, and well, let's see what happened. Oh, it's Alex here, hope you're all keeping well. So let's start with HostGator. Now HostGator, I'm very familiar with. In fact, I used to promote them because they are actually kind of okay. You know, they're very low cost and you know, you get a reasonable service for your money. Can you get better hosting than HostGator for a similar price? Yeah, you can. I'd recommend a company like Host Armada. They might be like a dollar or so more than HostGator, but it's certainly worth it in terms of the extra performance and service that they offer. Anyway, back to HostGator. So I signed up on their basic, you know, bottom cheapest plan that you can get. I think it's called the Hatchling plan, comes in around 275 a month, depending on how long you sign up for. Signed up for that, it comes with a free domain name. So I registered um, popcornhostgator.com, just so that we know what we're dealing with. And the process was really straightforward. Once I'd signed up, it was just a simple click to install WordPress, and my site was ready to go within a few minutes. To make sure the test was fair, I took a copy of bestcornpopper.com. I turned off any caching plugins and also removed the Google Analytics scripts, so it was just really the pure theme and the content. Made a copy of it using the all-in-one migration plugin, which, by the way, is a great way to make a copy of your site and move it to some new hosting. Installed the plugin on my fresh WordPress install over on HostGator, uploaded the backup file, and clicked the button and it all worked perfectly. So now I've got a copy of Best Corn Popper on HostGator. I decided to run it through a couple of speed tests. So I started with Google Page Speed Score, and the results were pretty impressive. As you can see, we pulled in a score of 98 on mobile and a score of 100, which is the best score you can get on desktop. And this is without any caching plugins or anything like that running. I then ran the site through GT Metrics, which is another great tool to test the performance of your website. And the scores were equally as impressive over there. We we're able to get a performance score of 100%, a structure score of 93%, and the largest contentful paint or the LCP was 740 milliseconds. So that was all pretty impressive. Great page speed scores on HostGator. Who'd have thought it? So now it was time to move on to GoDaddy. Now GoDaddy, I've been using them for a long time for my domain registrations, and they're really good at domain registrations. In fact, I'd go as far as to say I'd recommend them for domain registrations. But when it comes to their hosting, it's, it's not good. It's not good. I've played around with GoDaddy hosting in the past, and I've also heard stories from you guys, in fact, and my clients about GoDaddy hosting, and yeah, none of the stories end well. So I went over to GoDaddy with an open mind. You know, I didn't want to think about those past experiences. Maybe GoDaddy have changed. Maybe they're good now. So I signed up with their basic WordPress hosting package. I think it comes in around $4.99 a month, which is more expensive than HostGator and Host Armada, I should say. 
And yes, yeah, signed up. The process was fairly straightforward, getting signed up, and I was sent details of my new hosting package. The GoDaddy hosting also comes with a free domain name, so I tried to register Popcorn GoDaddy, you know, in a similar format to the one that I just registered with HostGator, which of course was Popcorn HostGator. Well, it wouldn't let me. It seems that on GoDaddy, you can't register any domain names that include the word GoDaddy. I guess like it's a trademark thing or something. So I went with Popcorn G Daddy, which kind of sounds like a rapper or something like that, but um, that went through fine. And then I started to set up WordPress. That's where this whole process started to grind to a halt. Uh, it said that I needed to authenticate my domain name by clicking on an email and um, the email never arrived. So I popped into the live chat and they were pretty helpful. I must say, you know, we had a, a chat and, and then suddenly it all started working and I was then able to log into my new WordPress website. I installed the all-in-one migration plugin and proceeded to upload the backup file. And I was pretty lucky, I've got to say, that my backup file was below the 33 megabyte file limit they have on GoDaddy. If it was any bigger then, yeah, moving the site across would have been a complete pain because there's no options to increase that file size limit. The upload took ages. It's only like a 30 meg file or something, but it took ages. I mean, I recorded a little something. Seriously, I thought that HostGator was bad, but HostGator was a dream to set up in comparison to GoDaddy. I mean, this thing has been going for, I don't know, 15 minutes. Just a simple import using uh, all-in-one migration. Let's say HostGator, it did it like that. I was impressed, but GoDaddy. <sighs> It was really slow and in fact most of the time it actually failed. It would get to 100% and it would just not do anything or it would just get stuck as it was uploading. And yeah, quite a bit of time passed. I'm talking a couple of hours as I continued to try and upload my backup file. Anyway, eventually I was able to get the file uploaded and we were able to restore the site and create a copy of Best Corn Popper on the GoDaddy hosting. And now it was time to run the site through the Google PageSpeed score, which is what I did, and this is what happened. The GoDaddy speeds weren't too bad, although I should say they did fluctuate quite a bit. Every time I ran the test, I was getting different results. Some were as low as 82, uh, some were in the 90s, 91, 92, 93. So overall, not too bad. And with a little bit of tweaking here and there, I'm sure that you could consistently score in the 90s on the Google PageSpeed score. The desktop speeds were more consistent and it was usually hitting 99, 98, something like that. I then ran the site through GT Metrics and here are the results. We pulled in a performance score of 99%, structure score of 94% and an LCP of 782 milliseconds. So not as good as HostGator, but still pretty reasonable. So there we have it with the right theme you can get some pretty impressive page speed results, even if you're on some cheap and nasty hosting. Would I recommend GoDaddy hosting? No, not at all. Best avoided, it's just gonna be a headache. You know, the whole setup process was a headache. Would I recommend HostGator hosting? They're not too bad and they are really cheap. Um, but still, I think spending an extra dollar or two a month is probably worth it to go for someone else like Host Armada. And by the way, I've got a discount code for Host Armada. You'll find that in the description, along with the link it is an affiliate link. Do appreciate it if you use it. So that brings us to the end of this video. I'd love to know if you checked out our new theme, Popcorn. Have you got it up and running on some hosting? What page speed scores you be getting? Let me know in the comments. Do read all the comments that I get and I'll try to reply to as many as I possibly can. To make sure you don't miss any upcoming live streams or future videos, be sure to subscribe. You'll find the button down there somewhere. Be sure to click the bell. And if you like this video, if you found it useful in any way, please click the like button. That really does help me out. But until next time, bye for now.